What's up guys and welcome back. In this video, we are finally going to be building in this one of a kind unique MITX PC case. And as you can see, these are the parts we are going to be using in this. I will list them as we go, but it's going to be a very simple build, but a very powerful one as well. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this and we're going to take apart the PC so we can start mounting everything. But first, let's put together the motherboard so we can put it straight in and start building this awesome MITX Sneaker X PC. Now, I'm not gonna be able to show you how to install the Wi-Fi, but Rest assured that I already have made a video about that, so be sure to check that out if you're unsure on how to install the Wi-Fi for this motherboard. Let's install the CPU, push down on this, lift it up, and then raise this up. We have your CPU, here we have the 7800X3D. Line up your markings and your triangle, and gently place it straight in. Close it up, and clamp it back down. Next, we're going to install our M2. You have to remove these two screws here. So just remove these, this one. Lift this off. Now, see your M2 slot here. Peel this protective sticker off. Just like that. Grab your M2 SSD. Line up your notch here with the slot. Install this slot angle and then push straight in. Press down and install your M2 screw. Nice and slow. That's it. Don't forget to peel off your other protective sticker. Just like that. Now, realign your M2 screws and reinstall your screws. Now, let's install our RAM, open up our RAM slots, align our notch here with the RAM slot and the RAM with the actual slot, and press down, just like that. Rinse and repeat, and that's it. Motherboard, ready to go. Everything's installed. looking really good now let's prepare our case so that we can install the motherboard all right so now we're just going to remove the covers we'll remove these two thumb screws on each side set that aside and now we'll remove this protective cover for the PCIe 4.0 and then we've got two thumb screws again on each side here let's remove them now we can remove the back and front covers so I'm just going to pull back a little and lift up and that's it same for the front all I'm going to do is lift up pull back and then lift up again. So I'm gonna set that aside for a second. Now what I need to do is remove the middle piece here so I can install the motherboard onto it. And also the cables for the power supply because they haven't done that yet. Let's also remove the protective foam and the bubble wrap. Now we can see inside our case very well. So I'm gonna to need to remove the top bar first. Let's remove these two screws. It's one on each side here. Now I need to pull back on this and lift that pole out of the way. So I'm gonna to have to remove the power supply now. There's one right there. And another right here. There we are. Now I'm gonna slide the power supply out, just lift up, pull back, power supply's out. With our power supply removed, we're gonna just plug in the cables that we're going to need. Really simple, all we need is our ATX, our SATA 16 pin GPU cable, and also our CPU cable. So we'll plug these in now one by one. You can see here it's listed. I'll just flip that around so you can see. 8 pin CPU, here's your 16 pin, you plug that in first, nice and easy. One side will tell you, PSU, plug that in, line up the pins, and just plug that straight in. ATX 24 pin, you can see here you've got the 10 pin there, 18 pin there, can't get that wrong, so we'll plug in the 18 pin on the bottom, and then the 10 pin on the top. Push it in till it clicks, that's it. Now we have a SATA cable, very simple, 6 pin right there. And lastly, our CPU, so that will go right there. There we go. And that's it. Really simple, makes for a very easy cable management because you've only got one, two, three, four cables that you need to route. So now let's put the power supply back and get ready for our motherboard. I'm going to put back in the power supply first because we also need to make sure that for our power supply, we have the AIO tubing underneath it as well. Let's just get this in first, remove this power supply cable out the way. And our ATX is going to plug in here. So we need to make sure all of that fits. So this is how I need to have it, like this. So I'm gonna drop that in. Okay, we'll line it up now, just like that. And that's it, perfect. Here's our CPU cable, we'll route it over there. Our ATX is here and it's going to plug in like that. So let's just get that nice and flat so that you can plug in just like that. First, I'm gonna put in the two screws that hold the power supply back in. Now you remember what I showed you earlier, there's one right here and then there's another just on this side right here. All right, there we go. 
power supply is back in, so now we can get in our motherboard. So our motherboard is going to go in upside down, obviously. I'm going to plug in the CPU cable first because it's really hard to plug it in later. Here is the CPU cable, right? It's going to route it through. And now I'm going to plug that straight in. I'm just going to plug that in and then I'll show you. So here we are, just there. That's a CPU cable. And we'll just push it in and click it in. CPU cable is now plugged in right there. Put in our motherboard, just like this. Make sure our ATX cable is out of the way. There we go. Now let's get our ATX plugged in right now too, so we get it out of the way. There that goes in there. Let's just click it in. Now we have to line up our motherboard stands. Now the stand here, right there, has a little bit that protrudes, so we're able to slot that in first, and it will help hold the motherboard in place. So let's just line that up first. So now we'll put in our top screw to hold in the motherboard first, and that's just this one straight up here. Just nice and snug, don't go too tight. Now we're going to get the one in the top right hand corner, just like that. This one's going to be a little bit harder to get in because of where it's situated. It is just in the bottom left corner here. Reach in there and get this one in. Just get this cable out of the way. Put in our screwdriver all the way in like that. And there we go. Just screw that in, nice and snug. That screws in. Lastly, we've got the one next to the CPU power cable. You can see where it's going right there. So let's just put that in. We'll get that in nice and snug. Perfect. And that's it. That's our motherboard in. Four screws, nothing to it. ATX is in, CPU cable is also in. You can see why I had to plug it in first because as you can see, there really isn't much room at all to plug it in. It's so hard, you can't even see it properly. So that's why I did it like that. Now it's just a matter of plugging in our front panel cables, our SATA cable for our extra SSD, and we're pretty much almost done. All right, next we're gonna get the CPU cooler on. So let's put on some thermal paste. Now in this particular case, I'm just going to put a nice dollop in the center because the CPU surface is very much like the old Intel 1200 series. So. I believe just a nice dollop in the center is still going to cover the entire CPU. Okay, and then with heat, it will eventually spread out evenly and cover the entire CPU. So now what you need to do is clamp on these tabs here on both sides. You clamp it over the standard mount. You get one side on first, and also do not forget to remove the protective sticker on your cooling plate. Very important, so many people forget to do that. All right, so now let's get one side on first. Just one side on, now we're gonna get the other side on. Clamp it over, there we go. Tighten that side down. Uh, this side came off, that's okay. Just get it back on. There we go, it's on, let's tighten it down. Both sides on, let's just tighten it down so it's nice and snug, don't go too tight, no need to. As long as it's clamped on, that's all that matters. Once you feel that the screw is hand tight, that's pretty much enough. Okay, as you can see there, CPU cooler is on now, so that's great. As you can see, yeah. Let's plug in the front panel cable. All we have is power LED and power switch. So, really simple, nothing to it. And this is it right here, let's pull it out. Go, go through here. And now, in order to plug this in, I'm going to need to use tweezers because it's very hard to get it in there as there really isn't much room. So, we'll get this in now. There we go, we've got that in. Now we need to get in our power switch. Now that it's in, I'm just gonna make sure I push it in with the back end. There we go, double check that. All right, next I'm gonna plug in the PWM that comes off the pump. We've got the plugs just there. So let's just plug that in, simple, we'll go in CPU fan 1 and control it using the BIOS. The other 5 volt freaking ARGB, what I'm going to do with that is connect it to the splitter for the fans at the bottom. That way it syncs with all the RGBs. If I plug it straight into the motherboard 5 volt 3 pin just there, what's going to happen is it's going to be a separate color to the rest and I want to be able to control it all using the button on the case. That's why I'm just going to route the cable here, through here this gap here, which allows cables to come through and pass through to the bottom and underneath. And I'll plug it off one of the splitters for the ARGB fans for the AIO. I'll show you now. So as you can see, here's the bottom of the case, right? And underneath here is where your splitters are for each fan. That way you're able to plug it in to another 503 pin connector, etc. And you see here, this is the 503 pin that comes off the hub. But what we want to do is plug in the 503 pin that comes off the pump itself. So as you can see, the sleeved cable here, I have just plugged in with one of the splitters that come off the ARGB fans. And I've just plugged it in here. I'm just going to hide it and we'll hide the other 503 pin under here. Keep it all nice and neat and that will do it. And as you can see here, this is the button that's going to allow us to change the RGB colors using the button on the case. Right, so now is where we plug in our riser cable. So we'll just line this up and plug it straight in. Okay, and 
There we go. Perfect. Make sure it does clip in here. All right. Now we have everything in, such as the motherboard and the PSU. That was a bit of a pain getting it in because of how we had to route these tubes for the AIO. If only they were a little bit thinner, but we managed to get there. And we got the pump on as well. We've got our cable plugged in. Now we're going to install our 2.5 inch SSD for extra storage. Then we will install our graphics card, which is right here. It is the RTX 4080 Super. So as you can imagine, this is going to be one hell of a build. Let me show you guys how we install the 2.5 inch SSD. It's going to install right here onto this mounting plate. So I'm gonna to have to remove this, then we'll install it onto it and put it back in. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove the SSD. Really simple. SSD out, let's remove this mounting bracket. Because the cables are on this side, we're gonna make sure that our ports face out that way, like so. Get our four screws and we'll now install our four screws. Line up your screw holes, of course, and then just, first you just wanna line them all up, then tighten it down, because sometimes when you tighten one side, you're not able to get the other side in because it pulls it over. So just start them all up first, then tighten them after you get every single screw in. Now they're all in, so just go ahead and tighten them all the way down. Slide this side in here, you got this tab here, slide that in like so, and then push it back down and redo your thumb screw up right here. And now we're going to plug in our SATA cable for our SSD. So as you can see here, here is the cable, we're going to plug it into one of these SATA ports right here, just straight in like that, we'll route it straight down through here, and then we'll plug it into our SSD. You can see our SSD just here, just plug that in. We'll use this cable here to plug into the SSD, and this will plug into this one right here. This SATA cable that comes from underneath the case is from the hub. Pencil our cables together. 2.5 inch SSD is in. I'm now going to reinstall the screw, and just fingers crossed that it holds in just right, and we can reinstall this piece here, and it doesn't interfere with the tubing of the AIO. All right, so, so far so good. It looks like it's going to fit, not get in the way, but we'll only know when we install the other red plastic part right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. And look at that, it actually fits perfectly. I'm so happy about that because I really wasn't sure and reinstall everything without the worry of it not lining up, because it does. Okay, that's one screw in there. Let's put the last one in here. Uh, it turned out perfect. It's just this one right here. All right, so that takes care of that side. That's back together now. Now let's get our graphics card in. So the purpose of this is to line the GPU up in here. Here's your riser cable, and this is where the GPU plugs in, right in there. So if I just put this long ways for a second, you can see in here, this is our PCI slot just in here, and this is where the GPU slots go, and you get two screws to tighten it down. Our GPU also only has two slots, so it's actually quite perfect. Do not forget to remove your PCI E-16 protector. And also unplug all our dust plugs as well. And now let's get it in. There we go, straight in. Then we have our 16 pin cable right here, four pin on the top. So it should just plug in, just like that, and plug it straight down. There we have it. Let's come around here like this. It's a little bit better, just like that. Okay, perfect. Let me just flip this around so you guys can see it on this side. As you can see here, we've got these uh, two screw holes here. Let's line that up, put one in. Make sure we tighten that all the way down so it doesn't move. Make sure it's straight. GPU plugged in, everything's all plugged in. Now, a lot of it's also gonna be covered, so bear that in mind as well. Now let's just try and get all our cables hidden so we can get everything back together. Right, so underneath here, we're going to find your power or your fans and the hub, and also your PWM with your 503 pin. Let's cut that loose and route it where it needs to go. We have a SATA port just here. Push that on through here. Let's get that SATA port there and we'll plug this in and I'll show you guys how I plugged it in. Let me just get it in first. That's good. Now for the fan control and the RGB control, we need to get them in. All right, and we have a 503 pin. So we need to get that straight there. We'll come up through the gap here. Now everything should work. We'll give it a quick test run and make sure that it is in fact all working. Tuck everything back in, hide all the cables once again. Just push it all underneath, like so. We'll use zip ties in a minute. All right, so as you can see here, I routed that cable straight through here, like that. And now I can still get this SSD back in without disturbing it. As you can see there. Just push this underneath here. 
Take that. So here is the bar that goes along the top right here. Right, and you can see that one side does have a square part that protrudes. If you look at this part here, you're going to see there is a square shape right there. Okay, you need to line that up, push it in that side, then just widen it so that it will sit in. That's it. Once you do that, you're able to reinstall your two screws on either side, and that will secure that bar back into place. So with that bar in, flip this around, and let's install our two screws right here. One more here. Just nice and snug, don't go too tight. That is your bar here reinstalled. This is what it looks like complete. As you can see, it is a pretty amazing little build. Although it doesn't have much when it comes to a lot of hardware, such as hard drives and SSDs and all that, this is more of a very simple gaming PC. Although simple, yet still very powerful. I mean, in the end, we are rocking a 7800X3D with a 4080 Super. The 7800X3D is one of the best CPUs you can get now bang for your buck and the 4080 super is probably the second best gpu you can get when it comes down to it you have a pretty amazing gaming pc right here and that's what this is purely for i won't be doing much work off this at all i will be using my pc for content creating video editing and all that stuff and this is purely just for gaming and it's going to be displayed on a shelf just in the back corner there and um, i'll show you guys what it looks like when it's completely done another thing i wanted to point out about this pc is the 5 volt 3 pin that comes off the hub underneath the ssd here i did not end up plugging into the motherboard simply because i wanted to be able to control the rgb using the button right here and with that plugged in I wasn't able to use the button here even though I hold on to it or whatever it did not allow me to switch between the motherboard software and the hub so I've just left it unplugged so I can simply press this button here to change RGB patterns and colors it really does make it so much easier being able to control the RGB with the button here rather than going into software and changing it that way the only disadvantage here is that it doesn't control the graphics card RGB nor does it control the RAM RGB but all the other RGBs on this case such as the ones on the case all that is controlled via the button right here so that's pretty amazing and I have to say that I'm pretty happy with the way this came out it really is now just a matter of putting everything back together this even boots up as you can see this is the monitor right here we have an Ethernet cable plugged in as well so it does have internet and I also wanted to confirm that the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth is 100% functioning as I stated earlier on in this if you want to see the way I went about installing the Wi-Fi card for this because it doesn't come with an M2 Wi-Fi card. I ended up using the desktop Wi-Fi kit, AX200, and I used the antennas from that and installed it into this. I did do a short showing how to do that exactly, so be sure to check out that video if you're unsure how to install the Wi-Fi card for this motherboard. And overall, I think this motherboard is more than enough for gaming. So that's why I ended up settling for this motherboard. Plus I also wanted to see what it was like using the GNU B650i Night Devil for a gaming PC as well. And I wanted to see how it would hold up using something like a 7800X3D, DDR5 RAM, and then stacked up with all these other parts. We're going to put everything back together now. We'll even install the antennas and put the front piece and the back piece back on. And then I'll give you a quick guide through all the specs of this and we'll even do a quick benchmark. All right, so I'm gonna be able to put in the rest of the pieces with the PC on because it's not going to affect any part of it. Okay, so if I face the antenna straight down like this, and the other one, same, if I face it straight down, would it work? All right, so now if I face the antenna down like that, would I be able to get it on? Uh, yes, it does work. Right, so I'm able to use these smaller antennas by facing them down. If I tried to face them up, it would hit this part of the back part of the case, so, now that that fits, that's much better. We can now install our thumb screws. It's going to install the one on this side here first. Okay, we just line it up and screw that in. All right, now we'll install the one on this side right here. Just line it up, yeah, and we just screw that in. So that's our back piece back on. And as you can see right here, all everything comes out through the little gap at the back here. I'll show you in just a second. And finally, our front piece right here. If you look at it carefully, you can see you've got two holes here and also a little tab right there. That has to slot into the front here, right? So let me show you. The two screws here, one on each side there, they have to go where the gaps are. And that little lip I was talking about has to sit in that middle gap right there. Get all our cables in. We kind of come in down and then we push it in flush until the front part here is flush with the front. Then all you do then is just push it straight down and ensure that the screw holes line up. Then you, you install your thumb screws and that pretty much completes the entire build. We line up our screw holes and screw it in. Now remember, you just want to get in snug. Do not push it all the way in. You can accidentally crack the plastic because it is only made of plastic, remember? Just getting our two thumb screws here and there you go, guys. That completely finishes our Sneaker X 
gaming PC build. And I have to say guys, it absolutely looks amazing. I'm fully gobsmacked and just so stunned at just how nice this PC came out. And having all the hardware pre-installed made everything so much easier however they really should have pre-installed the cables as well and then that way you can choose what you want to take out now let's have a look at our bluetooth and our wi-fi make sure that that definitely works all right so for our cpu you can see here we have the ryzen 7 7800 x3d memory it's just running the standard configuration right now which is 4800 megahertz but it is that two gigabytes ddr5 we can just change that in bios later the first ssd is the lexar 2 terabyte 2.5 inch SSD, which equates to 1.9 terabytes, and our boot drive is the Vexa N17 terabyte. Ethernet is working, and we have already installed our GPU driver, which is RTX 48 Super by Zotac. Here you can also see we have both SSDs booting, and of course, we can check here that in fact our Wi Fi is working, it is picking up our Wi Fi, and lastly, our Bluetooth. So we can settings, devices, and right away we can see Bluetooth on or off. So there you have it guys, a very successful Wi-Fi card installed for the B650i by Jinyu, my devil. It really wasn't too hard at all and I have to say guys, I am very impressed with the motherboard as a whole because considering its very low price tag, it definitely has all the features that you would want in an MITX motherboard. Now of course you always want a lot more ports but that's not always feasible so it was a real shame that they didn't just add some extra ports or Type-C ports for the case. Instead, they just made it a case and they didn't give you any ports at all. It would have been nice just to see a port somewhere on the front or the back, but there really isn't any at all. I mean, even somewhere as simple as here, or just on the front here, they could have integrated it and routed the cables through, but they just didn't do it. And I'm very disappointed with that. But apart from that, I've always wanted such a cool little MIT text build. Now, it's not the smallest case due to its length, but it definitely is the best looking case by far. It looks just magnificent and the open frame style PC case build here, I'm really into that. I love that whole open frame look and you know, you saw how easy it is to remove these parts, it's not hard at all. So cleaning it is going to be a breeze as well. I'm just going to give it a nice wipe down and uh, we'll do a quick benchmark. Just use some isopropyl alcohol here and a microfiber cloth and I'm just going to give it a nice wipe down all over. And already it's looking so much better. I like that it has that shine through it it also has like pearl in it so that looks really really nice and there you have it guys the cooler master sneaker x gaming pc build what do you guys reckon is this something you would do yourself would you spend the extra money to get a pc case like this and what do you guys think in the end as always let me know in the comment section what you think Right, so now i'm just going to quickly show you some quick benchmarks and show you how well the gpu runs in firmark the way that it is now Now we're going to run some benchmarks. Now this is just a basic edition. Run a quick benchmark and let's see how we go. Right, so this was just a simple graphic test, right? Let's do benchmarking. All right, so this was running at 1440p, right? Now, our resolution, we're going to select 1080p first. 1080p, let's run that.
And right, so here is the benchmark test. As you can see, it's a really good test. We do hit some pretty good numbers on here. And this is in a 1080p, so now let's do it in 1440p. And let's see how that looks. We switch it to 1440p. And now we will run the benchmark once again. So here you can see the 1440p benchmark and you gotta admit that's not far off at 1080p so that looks great that really is a very good score when you've got a certain cpu and a certain graphics card you want to be playing in certain resolution that way it caters to that type of gameplay sometimes it isn't the best thing when you're using such a powerful graphics card to only play in 1080p now don't get me wrong you can do it but there will be times where it's better to play on a higher resolution just because of the hardware that you're using and in this particular case, I believe 1440p is going to be your sweet spot. That's what it's like if you were to use this type of hardware and basically how it would perform. So of course, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And let's do benchmarking 1440p. Right, there we go, 560 by 1440p. So as you can see, it's benchmarking right now. So we're just going to get this wrong and we'll see the result. Then we'll benchmark 1080p. So a little bit better in 1440p, you're reaching like 260 FPS, that's pretty good. Minimum 250, max 271, average 267-ish. Usage, 98%, fans are about 1300 RPM. Core clock is 2300 MHz. Memory is at 1438 MHz. Right, so there's your score for 1440p, in three. Yeah, so now let's try 1080p. So if you've never seen a setup like this before, it's the newer build, newer version, so download this if you want. As you saw, I got this from Geeks 3D. In 1080p, as you can see, the FPS is much higher. The lower the resolution, the higher FPS you're going to get. Usually, that's the case. And the higher the resolution, usually the FPS will drop a little bit lower as well. Right, so there's your 1080p. Now, we're going to do 4K. Let's just see what's up. At 4K, it's running 137-ish FPS. So there you have it. That's all three resolutions. And of course, don't forget to tidy up all your cables underneath the PC case. You know, use some zip ties if you have to, and just bundle everything up so that when you tuck it away, you do not see any of it dangling from underneath, because that's the last thing you want. You don't want to be lifting up your PC case and then have all these cables dangling down. Use some zip ties and just bundle everything together nice and tight so that it doesn't drop down for any reason. As you can see, that's the bottom of the PC case. That's what it's going to look like. And it looks very, very nice. It really does. And that basically brings us to the end of this magnificent MITX Sneaker X PC case build. And honestly, I can't think of a better PC case than what this is right now because at the moment you don't see anything like this at all. This PC case is so unique. It really just blows my mind that they were able to come up with a PC case like this. The other thing I also wanted to point out is you notice these springs here on either side. That is just another cool little feature of this PC case. The cool thing about it is that you're even able to adjust it like a normal suspension. You can turn the top part here and it would either compress the spring or open up the spring more. 
And well, in the end, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed building it because I truly loved building this awesome PC. And I just can't wait to have it displayed in the top corner right there. So I really hope you found this video helpful if you plan to build a PC like this and it gives you a better idea of what you can fit in it. And uh, be sure you stay tuned because I will be doing a few more little MITX builds and the next PC case build I'm planning to do is probably the N200 because the Cooler Master N200 is probably the most used MITX PC case and I want to see just how good that PC case is and just how well you can build inside of it and the parts you can use to make an amazing gaming PC. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mike's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now guys.